I've got kids, and that means it's always about them. But I need support too. That's where Ollie comes in with their delightful, hardworking gummies. My partner and I can actually get a good night's sleep, so we'll both stand a chance of managing our stress responses. Even when the kids are doing parkour in the living room, discover Ollie vitamins and supplements. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Today on CityCast Madison. Could Madison become less open to public nudity? State Republicans are pushing two bills to limit public nakedness. That's after last year's World Naked Bike Ride went viral after a young girl was photographed naked in downtown Madison, raising questions about consent which is something activist Lily Lux thinks a lot about. She often protests topless at the state capitol in the name of gender equality. We asked Lily why she fights and what it means to be naked in public. It's Wednesday, February 7th. I'm Bianca Martin, and here's what Madison's talking about. Lily, hello. Good morning. Good morning. So there are two bills being debated at the state capitol that would ban public nudity. One specifically would ban kids from attending any events with public nakedness. And the other makes it a crime to expose, quote, genitals, buttock, or other intimate parts. As someone who's known for protesting and holding vigil at the capitol topless, how might these affect you? Um. Well, in... A couple different ways, but also potentially in no way at all. So one of the things to be clear um, where I'm not necessarily worried about these bills is that the entire time I have been out there doing this, I have been breaking the state law. Um, What's unique is that Madison chooses to not necessarily enforce that law. So if I decided I wanted to go do this in Milwaukee or really any even our like Fitchburg or Middleton local jurisdictions, um, the difference is that it's allowed in Madison because they have chosen not to enforce it as one, a protected right of protest and two, from work that was done in 1990 when women um, who were ticketed fought the city and it was real discriminatory. So the, the only reason I have been allowed to do this for as long as I am is that I live in Madison and that protects me. Um, and I think where my concern is with them changing this bill is the language um, changed from public and indecent. So meaning like I would have to be doing something indecent um, or sexualized or what have you to intentional. So that language change is very interesting. And I'm curious to see how it plays out as far as because now just the sheer act of me being out there intentionally is now a a line cross. I don't have to be doing something indecent. So I don't know that adding a new law really makes any difference, but we shall see if it passes and how it's enforced locally. Mm hmm. Yes. And um, you're someone who has previously participated in the world naked bike rides that happen in Madison. Um, And you've had some some changes of heart on that related to some of the discussions that are happening on these bills. Um, The rides aren't new. They've been going on since 2010. But the bills were introduced last year after some controversy, after a young girl was photographed naked participating in the ride. Uh, It got national attention. Her image was posted and circulated on the Internet. Uh, Madison Police Department received multiple complaints. So I I wanted to ask you, you know, your take. What are your thoughts on kids at at these kind of events or spaces with public nudity? Uh, First off, I just want to say that I am not affiliated with the World Naked Bike Ride organization. Um, I or an organizer of the event. I have been a participant and one, I'm a bike commuter. So I love that it's about um, trying to find different ways to help the planet and, and all of those things. So I do support the notion of the bike ride in theory. However, I don't think it's okay that they allowed a child to participate. Um, And kind of two reasons. Uh, One, I work in a legal field, so I understand the ramifications of having a child participate. We just have different laws that regulate children, whether they are right or wrong, 
they exist. Um, I also understand that, you know, there are predators out there and that's why there were so many concerns. And I totally, I understand where people are coming from on that point. So I, I understand sort of like that side of things. Um, and then I also just personally believe that no one else can consent for someone else. And so while I know we have many laws that allow parents to make choices for children, I don't necessarily know that this is one that I think so anyone, even a parent, can make for someone else. So I just kind of kind of have that perspective as a as a mother. And I, I'm not against nudity. But I used to let my children run around the yard. We'd have dance parties. Like I definitely think a healthy opinion and body positivity is wonderful and should be cha- shared with children. Um, I just think there's a time and place that's for our society uh, at large you know, that opinion. Do I personally care? Not so much, but I do understand that we as a world and just a way to protect children from predators have chosen to do that. Yeah. And you, you were actually at the bike ride and saw her. I did. Yeah. And that, and it was upsetting to you. It was, I actually ended the ride early because I one, I I couldn't believe that they were allowing the child to participate. I really sort of weighed and was like, well, I can just go towards the back. I'm not, a, you know, affiliating with this. And then I was just like, you know, this doesn't feel right to me. And so I stopped and I don't plan on participating again since they have definitely decided that that's their policy. It's sort of like the world naked bike ride as a unified front around the world. That's their policy. And that's fine. That's their choice. Um I totally support their choice. I'm all about supporting choice. Um, but right. <laughs> but yeah. I I don't have to agree with you. And then I choose not to be involved. So, yeah, it, it's certainly like I, I think a lot of people get a kick out of seeing this bike ride. Uh, and, <laughs> and obviously, I mean, it's been going on for a decade. <laughs> and I think it does get a lot. I think people probably because it's kind of fun and silly people and a lot of people in Madison, you know, think it's it's just a fun naked bike ride. But it's also actually building body positivity. And it, it started for that as well as um, protesting and hoping for, you know, have, having independence from oil. Um, so there is the there's a cause behind it. I, I want to understand a little bit more about Madison and its uniqueness. We kind of touched on it at the at the top. Um, and to talk about what you do um, in terms of advocacy, um, you're a bit of a celebrity around town. <laughs> <laughs> you demonstrate um, while topless on a regular basis for political causes that you, you know, believe in, reproductive rights and bodily autonomy. Can you talk a little bit about what allows uh, you to do that? So, Originally, how Madison became top free um, city is that in 1990, um, there was an issue with uh, three women being ticketed at B.B. Clark Beach. Tammy Baldwin was um, one of the women's lawyers, and they fought the city about it being a discriminatory to ticket the women. And I mean, there were protests about it. It was a whole thing in 1990. And basically, since that time, Madison has been a top free city. Um, not that the state law changed, but Madison's enforcement of it because it was just ruled that it was discriminatory, that male bodies are OK and female bodies aren't. So that originally gave us like the top free freedom. Then the World Naked Bike Ride things happened in 2010 and the city did their thing about like it's a protected form of protest. So when I first started protesting out at the Capitol, um, and I've been doing this work in Madison, just to go back a little history on myself, for over a decade, I host a um, bar crawl every year. I've done smaller events. Once I found out that it was basically legal, or I should say allowed, I don't like to use the word legal, it is allowed in Madison, I just started doing it. I was like, this is awesome. Um, But even though I've been doing it for over 10 years, when Roe was overturned, I was obviously very upset. And instead of doing it sometimes or whenever, I just started doing it every day. Um, And by doing that, you know, obviously draws attention. Um, So, uh, you know, I use it as a way to raise money for the Wisconsin um, Women's Medical Fund and help um, people get access to health care. And then just constantly trying to share about what you can do, how you can get involved, um, what to contribute to, like status of our rights in Wisconsin. So I've just used it sort of as a 
a way to get information out about what's happening. Yeah, it's and it sounds like at the core what you're fighting for and what you're, you know, going out to demonstrate about is equality. And like I did not know that history about in the, you know, 1990s, you know, these three women, they wanted to be topless at B.B. Clark. And they, they're probably sit, they could be sitting by men on the beach who are not wearing a shirt, uh, who have their nipples exposed. And they won with the help of Senator Tammy Baldwin. That's huge. Right. Yes. I didn't know about the Baldwin angle until um, I recently I finally found the women's names and I tried to do some research on it. And I came across that and I was like, it's oh, awesome. She was their lawyer. So. Um, thank you, Lori Bernstein, Don Hose, and Marsha Weissman um, for what you did in 1990. I, and I think that's a little bit of my concern about like all of this um, that happened with the World Naked Bike Ride. It's you know, potentially going to change almost 30 years of precedent within our city. I'm really hoping it doesn't because, again, um, I don't really know what's going to happen yet. But um, I do thank the women who did the work before and I continue to do it. And yeah, it's it's a great little quirky thing that is in Madison. But the reason I keep doing it, and as long as I live in Madison, I plan to, is that every man that has lived has been able to walk out their door on a hot day and that their body is not shamed. They are not told to cover up. They are not um, judged or sexualized or harassed for existing in the form that they are. And while I know with the bike ride, it's all about public nudity, et cetera, with what I do, I'm literally like, this is equality. If you want to argue with me and be like, well, you're different, I'm here to say no more. You are not to tell me my body is different. You are not going to treat me and persecute me, prosecute me um, for these things anymore. I'm just not here for it. There's a big difference between talking and reporting, especially right now with a fire hose worth of news coming your way. You know what helps? Having reporters in the field. I'm Brad Milkey from ABC News, and that's what we've got on ABC's daily podcast, Start Here. Every morning, Start Here takes you across the country and around the world for a quick, smart look at the stories that matter. It's fast, it's straightforward, and sometimes, gasp, news can even be fun. So let's meet up tomorrow morning. Listen to Start Here wherever you get your podcasts. Shipping can make or break a sale, so optimize how you ship your orders with ShipStation. They make it easy to automate and manage orders no matter how big your business grows. And they might even be able to help reduce shipping and warehouse costs. So optimize and keep up your momentum for growth with ShipStation. Sign up for your free 60-day trial now at ShipStation.com and use the code P-O-D. That's ShipStation.com with the code P-O-D. Can you talk about some of the reactions you've experienced um, while protesting? <laughs> I love that uh, laugh. <laughs> uh, for the most part, honestly, Madison is an amazing city. And as I'm sure we all know, um, it's almost all positive. Honestly, I, I get mostly smiles, a lot of smirks, you know, kind of a lot of head shake ch- chuckles. I think one of the more surprising reactions um, that I wasn't expecting is the number of women actually who will look away from me. But I think um, it really shows how much shame is taught to us that even just seeing, you know, a woman, a femme presenting body on the street makes you feel like, oh, like I, I'm, I'm not allowed to see that. I shouldn't see that. I was really, and, and younger women too. I mean, I kind of expected it out of older women, but I, I was really surprised by um, those reactions that I was getting. And then obviously I've been screamed at so many times. I, I really couldn't even, but um, I, I don't listen to it. I think of all the times I've been smiled at or encouraged or, you know, um, I had this one woman remarkably come up to me at farmer's market one Saturday in tears. And I was just like, Oh, like, I'm really not sure where this is going. It could go, you know, you never know what the Any beginning kind of way. Yeah. It could go anyway. What is she going to tell me? And she just said, I can't even look at my own body in the mirror because I have so much shame and just what I, you know, self-esteem issues, whatever it is. And, you know, self, self-esteem and shame is not a, a, a female problem. It's a, it's a human problem, right? 
And she just wanted to tell me about, you know, how much she appreciated what I was doing and how strong I was, et cetera. And I just started crying because I felt so bad that this woman couldn't even appreciate this miraculous form that they've been given and can't even look themselves in the mirror. Like that, that was just devastating. So, I mean, it really runs the gamut as far as reactions that I've, I've gotten. Um, but for the most part, it's good. Yeah. Well, I've encountered you out and about, and I can say my (laughs) my own reaction um, is a sense of pride. And um, it's almost um, vicarious um, love of of my own body and and seeing you, you know, it makes me proud. I wanted to ask you about the authorities and how like police have interacted with you because you you know you walk around the capitol square there's the state capitol police and there's the madison police and how you know knowing that this is as you mentioned it is against state law what kind of interactions you've had with them sure um initially the uh first off just again because i've been doing this for a long time um I've never had an issue with Madison police saying anything to me. And, you know, I've walked around concerts on the square. I've been doing this all over the city. I ride my bike this way now because I'm a bike commuter. So if you see a top lift lady running down the path, (laughs) probably me. Um, So I just, I do it wherever now. And I I really never had an issue with Madison police because again, there's this longstanding precedent that like, as, as long as she's not doing something wildly inappropriate, it's allowed. So they leave me alone. Um, and I have to give, um, the state Capitol police credit, um, because while they were initially very harassing of me, once the Madison police went on record saying that what I was doing was allowed and they always knew it was allowed when I initially started showing up at the Capitol every day, um, obviously they got some complaints. Shocking. I, I probably seen hundreds of police calls made in front of me and they wanted me to go across the street because they knew it was allowed in Madison, but they're like, well, we just want you to go over there. And I, I, again, gave a little bit of, you know, respectful pushback of like, well, I'm pretty sure if I can do it over there, I can do it here. Um, And so while they never forced me off the property, they definitely tried to get me off the property. But, you know, that lasted maybe, I don't know, the first 20 days or so. And then they left me alone. I mean, I've been out there for so many protests every day. I've I've sadly seen them get chewed out by people who called them to complain about me. And then, you know, they're, they don't do anything about getting rid of me. And then they get yelled at. And I'm sorry for how many days I've probably ruined for many of the Capitol police officers. But, um, I am curious with this law change, if it will embolden, um, the Capitol police to finally force me off the property. I don't know. It's, it's going to be interesting to see one, if it passes and two, what the enforcement will be like. Maybe I'll just have to sit across the street and be like, neener, neener, I'm still here. I don't know. <laughs> you know, the census is a form of protest. You know, you're doing this to bring about change, hopefully, you know, to get attention um, for causes that are very important to you. Um, I assume also you want potentially other people to, to join in. I've definitely gotten a lot of feedback of like, you've been out here for a while and you're, you're still by yourself. Um, I've never done this with the intent of getting other femme presenting bodies to go around top three. Like that, that has never really been like my goal that sharing the idea that it's allowed and that you could, yes, that's definitely like, I, I would like to get the word out. But the one thing I realized after about my third annual Um, bar crawl that I do is that I would have so much interest. Everyone's messaging, everyone's coming. And then, I mean, the turnout has always been good. I'm not going to complain about the turnout, but I've always definitely been missing people who I thought would come. And after doing some, you know, work and asking people what happened, fear. It is, it's, it's not just the shame. And as much as I tell people it's allowed that, I, I mean, women, can be harassed in a, in a parka, um, you know, so the idea that you're going to put your body out there and get, you know, that attention and harassment, it's very fearful for most women to take that step. Um, and also like I am a white woman, uh, who is, you know, mildly attractive and, you know, so I I have privilege. 
So I am able to walk confidently because of my privilege. Like I'm not being necessarily body shamed or, you know, I might be treated very differently if I was a trans woman or a black woman. I mean, who knows, um, you know, how, how that would differentiate the experience. And so the fear um, and the shame are really what hold a lot of people back from doing this. How do you personally handle inappropriate, you know, attention or that sort of thing when you're out there? So I actually handled harassment a little bit differently, whether I'm clothed or not clothed. Um, if I, you know, if I were to get street harassed, um, like on a, in a general way, I definitely would, um, you know, have some words to say, uh, generally speaking, when I'm out protesting, because I know I'm already um, putting out a lot of, atten- you know, I-, I try to not engage, I just ignore. So um, surprisingly, um, I've really never felt unsafe. And anytime I do, I just put my shirt on. Like, I'm not going to walk into a parking garage, probably topless, because, you know, as a woman walking into a parking garage in and of itself can be a scary thing. So I don't put myself purposely in situations where I would feel unsafe or harm. Um, So I just either remove myself from the situation or I, um, you know, cover myself if that's what I need to do. I'm always going to make sure that I am protecting myself. Yeah. Well, you know, it will be fascinating to see, you know, how this all plays out. Um, In the meantime, the Madison City Council did vote in 2011 that it was a legitimate form of protest and artistic expression. The organizers of the bike ride are still planning for a 2024 ride this year. Before we let you go, I guess, what do you ultimately hope happens (laughs) in the midst of of these latest bills and, and this public conversation around public nudity? I wish people would care a lot less about what other people do. If it is not causing harm, why do you care what someone does? Uh, You know, so like as far as like personal freedoms and things like that, I mean, as a bigger picture take on the whole thing, uh, I I don't really see um, the issue there. So I would just like for sure for Madison to keep its progressive stance and say, you know, um, as far as top freedom, Anything you can do, I can do also. If you want to argue that everyone puts their shirts on, I will totally put my shirt back on. But as long as a cis male can walk out their door, so can I. So that's really my take on it. Equality. Lily, you are divine. Thank you so (laughs) much for what you do for all of us Madisonians and for giving us your time um, Mm. to talk about your take and your, your protests. Really appreciate it. Absolutely. That's Lily Lux, performance artist and equal rights activist. That's all for today here on CityCast Madison. I'm Bianca Martin. If you enjoyed the show, why not share this episode with the person in your life who you know would gladly bike across town in their birthday suit. We'll be back tomorrow morning with more stories from around the city. Until then. That's the Disney until then that I do.